Welcome to this Windows Computer and Technology channel and I get asked a lot about this question of new features. And a lot of people are still stuck on the, well, you know, how about Sun Valley? That Sun Valley thing is coming to our Windows 10 machines. And so there's kind of a, a mix up of people's understanding of, you know, what Sun Valley is and, and where actually is it, it's present. So Sun Valley is really in Windows 11. That's where all the UI change, the interface change is happening. Uh, so Sun Valley, that's where it is. Windows 10 will not get Sun Valley. But um, could it get some features? Could there be things that will be changed? Will there be the new store, the Microsoft store, and stuff like that? Microsoft is not very clear when we are at the moment of asking of what is making it to Windows 10 or not in, in, in the future. We have a hint already because 21H2 doesn't offer a lot of new things. So that shows us they're going to pretty much put Windows 10 on its uh, kind of, you know, support time. They're going to give us the Windows uh, security updates and bug fixes every month, but that's going to stay like that don't expect to have really big feature updates anymore. Um, one of the things that is coming, we know that um, something that was announced for Windows 11 and Xbox for gamers called Direct Storage, which um, is something that will be in Windows 11, will apparently make it, um, says that uh, Microsoft said that it would bring Direct Storage to Windows 10 PCs if they have the specially designed NVMe based SSD drives. So for gamers that would want to have fast, rapid storage and performance for gaming, uh, no need to necessarily go to Windows 11 on that side. Apparently that will be coming to Windows 10. So uh, this is nice. Um, about the basic apps, so you know we have those basic apps like the news and int the the news app, the the weather app, the mail app, and all of that. Will there be a refresh of all of it? Um, it's anybody's guess. Is some of the design and the look of these apps might come to Windows 10. Once again, I don't expect to have a lot of changes in the upcoming um, in the upcoming you know, months and, and years on Windows 10. I think we're pretty much at that time period where we are just going to be, like I said, in a quiet environment. And frankly, once again, I'll mention it again. That's what people want. Honestly, you want to have a quiet, the quiet life on Windows PCs? Well, the quiet life is going to happen on Windows 10. You'll have just the monthly updates that are coming like for security and bug fixing and that's it and you'll be happy and hopefully things are going to work well no big feature updates no waiting for eight hours to something to install that has new features that you don't care about that will be windows 11 <laughs> and that will be for another um you know another generation of of, of enthusiasts that like to have this um, these new features, these new bells and whistles, see new things, have a new interface, but that's pretty much it. Um, I think this is the good way of keeping Windows 10 anyways. For uh, I, I see a lot of people saying, well, you know, if they only could fix Windows 10 because it's, you know, full of bugs and problems. Well, it's not. And if you do have problems, I'll say it again. Look at your hardware or look at what you are installing on your PC. There's a good chance, and, and I'll say it again, as a tech guy, 99% of Windows problems are user-related or program-related or driver-related by other manufacturers. And, of course, a small chunk of it is hardware problems. Windows is almost never the problem when there's blue screens, when there's freezes. It is Windows that you blame because that's what you have in your face. Windows 10 is rock solid. It is a good operating system. It works fast. It works good. Um, there is no such thing as, well, it's ton it has tons of problems. When I see somebody say, well, apparently that has problems, this has problems, it doesn't. But I'll you know remind everybody again, remember that 
who complains is the ones that have problems. And when you have 1.3 billion people with P P Windows PCs, even half of 1% of these people having a problem is millions of people. And of course, they're going to rant. So it gives the impression of a lot of problems. Um, you could see the same on the Mac side. If you go to forums of Macs with people having problems, you'll see that there's way a lot more people complaining about Mac OS and Macs having problems uh, than people think. But that number is very small compared to Windows PCs. So it makes less waves, basically. But there's as many people having problems with Macs. People thinking Macs are, you know, run solid and perfect. That's because Macs are lower numbers. And also, notice how on Macs you don't install as much and don't do as much as you do on Windows. That also generates a big difference in the chances of having problems. So, you know, just make sure you don't install those, you know, software. I tell you, see cleaner that everybody says, no, no, you need this, it's great. It's not. And it's useless. And everything like that is useless. It's a brainwash of these companies that comes to to let everybody know, oh, well, you need all of that, you know, junk. No, it's junk. And that is one of the principal problems of Windows might be crashing. Something else, not Windows. But... The quiet times will be here, and uh, hopefully, just keep your system, you know, up to date, and and don't install unnecessary things, and uh, things should be working pretty well in general. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.